There's a hobo in Gary's studio. Let's see. Who's all here? We got three people here. When did you promote earlier? I think. Because it's we shouldn't have people coming in this slowly. All right. Brand. Let's go. Happy Friday, everybody. It's the end of the damn week. Dude. Did you, did you lace your lunch with anything special? No. No, I'm sadly, I, I didn't. Uh, How are you, kid? I am kid? all right. How are you? I'm fine. Hello? Very, very. I must oh, say, I, I'm very pleased that uh, we started this show in the correct studio. I like that. Uh, I can change it if you that like always it. always makes me so happy that we're in the studio we're supposed to be in. Fuck you. But, uh, you know, the, the only problem with this studio, though, is... Diabetes. 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 There you go. <laughs> uh, you know, we lost wow. him in 2020, man. He's been dead for four years, man. He lived a yeah. long time. He was way up in his 80s. Uh, he was in. He was uh, damn near eighty when he appeared on uh, Craig Ferguson. It's like his only major network interview as an old man. Wilford, Wilford Brimley on Craig Ferguson, and he seemed so confounded. Like, why am I here? <laughs> hey, and he even asked him at some point, like, why did you invite me here? <laughs> and then he, you know he did that thing where he he says, if you can play the harmonica, you you win the gold in harmonica, and so. He fucking played harmonica and won the golden harmonica. His one wow. time on late night TV, Wilford Brimley. Love that Dude, guy. Dude, I'm being censored again. Are you? Yeah, I write in the chat, in the YouTube chat, F. U. Shenotsky, and it doesn't appear here on. That's interesting. Let me, let me see. Hold on. Let me go do the show here. And see if it shows up for me. I invited Kitty Phillips too from uh, Flip Magazine, Flip City Magazine, hoping she might show up. She's a lot of fun. Yeah, she is. It's like I've been on her show. It's her turn to be on ours. Oh my God. I couldn't uh, write that word. All right. And, I'm looking. Oh, no, no. no I'm not. seeing Hello, Shinotsky, and uh, but I don't see anything else from you. Okay, and um, King Sporkal gave a, a lovely, loving F you to are... YouTube. It appears, but it doesn't appear here in StreamYard. Dude, I think StreamYard is filtering comments. Wow. Interesting. Odd. Uh, and you're a wrench, so they shouldn't be doing anything with you. Well, yeah. Is, this is the world in which we live now, where everything is police. Yeah, that's really odd. So, uh, anyway, I want to say hi to everybody. I see that uh, Shinatsky is here. Um, okay. You want to put the banner up so I don't have to say Oh, it? I already did, but I don't have any problem doing it again. There you go. There you go. Uh, that's for my good friend. Uh, Mrs. A is here. I don't think that's my school teacher, Mrs. A. Uh, Mrs. Adeg Balola. 
Uh, she's a friend of mine still over on uh, Facebook. Although I don't think she she follows my political stuff, <laughs> you know I don't need do f political stuff over there because that's it's run by a fascist. You know if you don't left think you're not allowed to talk, and so I I stick to my political stuff over on X, but I, I don't want to get overly political because I want to talk about things and I want everybody to feel included. But I feel more free to say shit over on Twitter. You do too. I see your post too, Keith. You fucking liberal. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Trump. <laughs> no shit, really. <Ricky. laughs> I love you, man. I don't care what your political uh, beliefs are. I fucking love you, man. <laughs> you're such a great person in my life. As uh, long as you're not. Since I raised... as... No, go ahead. It's love my alien stuff. As yeah. long as you're not going to get See, upset about all the alien stuff I post. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. Nor the gay porn. Um, oh. Tiny Ranger Danny is here. Um, let's see. Anybody else pop in yet? We've, wow. Oh, uh, Pacal's here. What's up, buddy? Good Friday. Oh, Tiny Ranger is Don Don. I figured it was Don Don. So, Don Don, Ranger Power. So I hope everybody's having a good Friday. Uh, this is, is the, start, the start of your Friday right now here on TGIF, uh, the show where uh, we are so sweet that we can call Diabetes. Out. Diabetes. There we go. <laughs> you know, Paul Rudd's about the same age now as Wilford Brimley was when he made... Uh, uh, when he Thanks. made... Uh, yeah, well, when he no, when he made the uh, Ron Howard movie. Oh, Cocoon, yeah, yeah, yeah. As Craig Ferguson pointed out in his interview, <laughs> that he at the time he interviewed him, he was the same age, Brim, uh, uh, Wilford was when he was in Cocoon, the same age. Wow. So, but, uh, it is Friday. We're going to be talking about some cool shit. As you saw in our thumbnail, we're going to be talking a little Stallone. We're going to talk a little Henry Cavill. We're going to talk some Godzilla uh, King Kong. And not all fans liked Joker 2 trailer. I got to consider myself in that group because um, I didn't like what they... Uh, I'll get into it later. I'll get into it later. Um, first, how was your week this week, Keith? All right. All right. It was all right. That's that's it. Well, I mean, you know, I worked all week, so mm -hmm. I mean, it's all right. I mean, I made it Friday. Um, but Did you I will say this: fun this week. You know what? We had a really fun show that I did. Uh, with Sil Abdul on Wednesday, and I continued the fun again on uh, the Thursday morning coffee with Keith, of which you made me taking a look at everything that's been going on at CinemaCon, which has been running this week in Vegas. And uh, seems like everybody's having fun. Heck, even Marvel Comics is acting like they're going to try to do something. Yeah, it's like but, uh, uh, I, I loved reading. Overall, you know, how, uh, Kevin Feige said that the new Dead uh -oh. Dare, De uh, uh, Deadpool movie is fantastic, and I'm like, yeah. nobody cares what Kevin Feige thinks. <laughs> Reed, you're being put on blast by your own girlfriend. I was hanging out with them before the show, so I didn't get a greeting. That's fine. Oh, great hairs. <laughs> Hello, what am I confused? Sir? Greetings, Anima. Uh, it's I haven't seen you all day. <laughs> hey, Anima. Good, good pay to know you're out there me. listening. Yeah, pay attention to me. <laughs> oh, hey, hey is here. Yeah, and of course our good friend Zax. Okay, you I'm going. Do, I'm, I'm do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. You. Do it, please. You me do it. Okay. Let's see. Hey, fuck you, Kyle. 
Yes. And again, I want to say that I love Zach so much that it's it's just a sugary love that can diabetes. Be- <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> so hey, before I, I we get going, I, 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 yeah, I do. Yeah, I do too. What a great actor. Uh, great cowboy actor too. Uh, he was a cowboy. He worked on a ranch, w- and uh, didn't learn that until I was watching the director's commentary with John Carpenter and Kurt Russell on the thing. And Kurt Russell starts talking about how he w- worked on a ranch, and so he really loved digging into all that guts <laughs> on camera. <laughs> Just relished it. <laughs> so, but anyway, this is our new little uh, video. Hey guys, don't forget to click that like, subscribe, and notification button. We appreciate you watching the show. Now, back to it. Yeah, back to it. That's ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, you say things like that, and the steam just goes out of me. You guys do this show. I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um. Not much to say. Sorry, let's, I'm let's actually laughing at what and, uh, just said to me in private from Mac. <laughs> <laughs> if you get okay, fuck it. I'm going to show you what he just he posted this in our private group. <laughs> they just I don't know what's wrong with him sometimes, my buddy Mac. Oh wow. <laughs> That's not right. Wow. <laughs> I like my daughter's in that group, but then I'm like, oh yeah, my daughter's like gonna be is is 24 this this uh August. Like, oh my god, she's getting sold. This year again, I will say it to her again. I said, You are you are two years away from being what I was when I was called too old for joining the army. <laughs> You're so endearing. <laughs> You're getting old, baby. <laughs> Son of a... Better use those ovaries so they're going to dry up. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> These are the things I say to my daughter. This is the humor we have with each other. She's like, baby. Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get your girlfriend with, with banana in my pocket. <laughs> Wow. So all right, we got 25 people here. Let's let's get this thing going here. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and uh check your notifications and make sure you're still selected to get updates from us because YouTube is notoriously unsubbing people or as far as at least getting the, the notifications. Uh and also Kingsport. make sure Kingsport didn't you, get his notification today. He's he, he said so in the chat. Yeah, see, that's about, that's messed up, man. YouTube don't like us, no sirree, Bob. <laughs> so, uh, what is going on? What are you talking about, Don? Don? Whoa! My own way. Who Freeze. could we have here? But, but add him. I was adding because you hadn't added I'm him. Trying, said, I'm trying. You talk about him, but then you didn't add him. So then I go to add him, and you fucking remove him. You're an asshole. You know that, Martin? Oh. That was fun. Thanks for the invite, my friend. <laughs> How are you, Pops? Man. I am very blessed. Very cool to be here. Thank hey, you so Bob. much. Hey, Good. I can't oh, hang man. too, too long, but I thought I'd stop by, and, uh, you know, we could gag and plug Gary's interview on Sunday morning. That'll drop, and, uh, yeah, I always love what you guys do. Oh, is that uh, cool? You're going to drop it on Sunday? Yeah, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. That's going to drop Eastern time. It'll be there for everybody. Uh, we had a great long talk. It was wonderful. So, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, I think some people are really surprised when I tell them things. Yeah. The, the, you know, because like I was on another guy's show. Uh, was it Mad Ruth? I can't remember. I was on one of my friends. Di- no, it was Diabolical's channel. And when he found out about the kidnappings, he was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I was kidnapped, and and uh, I'm a product of parental kidnapping, and my daughter was kidnapped, and I got her back and fought for her the legal way. Uh, my dad just kidnapped me and raised me, 
And, uh, and I always kind of criticize him for that. I said, so it wasn't worth fighting for? Is that what you're telling me, Dad? <laughs> you think I'm a dick to Martin, you should see me talk to my dad. <laughs> I'm a jerk with my dad when he was, when he was alive. But, uh, uh, but he was kind of a jerk to me, too. I mean, that's where my sense of humor comes from. My, my mean sense of humor it comes from my dad. And uh, uh, so I always like, uh, like I would, I would pull a prank on him, Pops. And, and he would get so mad at me. And I said, I got it from you. <laughs> wow. Don't get mad at me. Wow. You taught me to be this way. <laughs> Uh, you no, know, it's great so, to finally be able to come to the show. I, I, I obviously I've been listening for years and years and years, and just uh, just made a point I of trying to carve out this week time. for sure. Yeah, so I just I had no out, idea you were doing... you were a bald old guy. Who knew? Um, you know, we. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm older than you, same. though. Well, yeah, but you know, and I look more like Keith than you. It's okay. People can say the truth and just be honest. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Love you. Love you. I got to tell you, they tell me that black don't crack, but I said, you've not seen Keith crack when I say things like he once had his anus bleached because oh, he it wider. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. The mean things I say to Keith. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, yeah, Zax is going to uh. be having me on... Um, his uh, Shogun show, because uh, Anima and I have been keeping up on this new Shogun show. Have you been watching it, uh, Pops? No, I'm at this point, I was going to be so late to it. I figured I would just get it when it's either near completion or whatever, then kind of come and then in watch and kind of get caught up, watch the whole thing at one time. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. and there's and there's so many other things I'm trying to wrap up um, at this point. So it'd be, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to catch it. Though. I, and I've not heard one real negative thing about it, so I can't wait. All I know I, is uh, I went into it with doubts. Because I figured it would be done with that modern eye. And instead, oh, I... it is absolutely uh, more accurate historically than even the first one. One yeah, of the few that... criticisms I have of the show is that the Catholics, just like in the 1980 version, did wear orange um, robes, cassocks instead of black. Uh, only in Japan. The reason why was to for it to resemble Buddhist monk robes, hmm. so they would feel more comfortable with them. And they took that away because it's a mood, it's a tone that they want in this this new series. It's mm -hmm. dark. The feudal period was a brutal period. Sure. And uh, in Japan, especially at that time, life really didn't seem to matter if if you weren't rich or powerful and uh the, when he sees that guy get beheaded and they show it in the first series too the beheading it's in a different context because it they have it take place earlier than it actually took place in the book and in the, the new miniseries and the new miniseries does a really good job of sticking close to the book they changed uh one thing major thing that i thought they was a good change and it and it deals with uh Lord Taranaga's uh, uh, Taranaga's son, because he's far more in the story. But what happens to him in the uh, fifth or sixth episode veers completely mm -hmm. off from the book. Is you? We don't even know. It's like he just disappears in the book. He just stops showing up. We don't know what happened to him. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so I'm, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the book. I read the book back in, uh, I think it was 79. And then the series came out. And uh, my dad was one of those guys, man, voracious reader. So when that book came out, he loved James Clavell. So, because he was a historian. He was a real history guy. And so he brought so much history in. And people thought that the original series was whitewashing the story. And I'm like, no, no, no. That guy, Blackthorn, is based on a real guy named Adams, a real dude. And a lot of the stuff that happened to him in the first few chapters and in the show, the first few episodes, actually happened to Adams. It's how it concludes where he veered from 
uh, the facts. The original source material, yeah. Yeah, the, the original source material, he altered what happened to Blackthorn than what happened to Adams. But he did become, he was a um, uh, major powerhouse there in the country because he saved Lord Tornaga. And he was given uh, the title of samurai and then eventually as a lord. I forget what the name is, the Tomatai or something like that. Um, and it's just, it's so fantastic. Yeah, beheaded a dude for standing too close. That soon is seen as so intense uh, when it happens. Uh, and it's just so quick. And it left not only, you know, the audience, but the main character is in shock from it. It's my color. Because this guy just gets beheaded for no freaking reason other than being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And so I, I do, I want to hear what you think of it, Pops, when you watch it. I do Absolutely. want to get your opinion on it. But I'm going to be joining uh, Zach's on the, the next show and going over some of these things. Uh, I'm stoked about the series. I could not believe how good it was. And, of course, the casting was amazing. My one beef in the casting was uh, because he's blue-eyed in the book, they gave the actor um, blue contact lenses, and they look weird. Because he has dark eyes in real life. And they just look fake. Whenever you get to a close-up, it looks really, really weird. And I wish they just ignored it and just let him have his dark eyes. But um, uh, we'll take time. Like, uh, I guess, what, we got two more episodes left of the show. So I'll check back with you in a couple weeks. And see if yeah, you yeah. want to jump on sure. and talk about it. And Zach yeah, knows I can hang out with him anytime, thing. but it's middle of the night, Zach. So you guys start so late. It's so rough with me. But Zach, you know, you can always coordinate and we'll try to figure something out anytime. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, Loki starts his show like late on, on Fridays. And yeah, the Friday I've show always got never... an open invitation. I'll, I'll pop in and say hi to the guys. I'm like going, I'm, I'm going to bed. I'm almost 60 years old, man. I'm going to bed. Yeah. Let's stay up at one o'clock in the morning trying to be funny. Not going to happen. Uh, Gary's going to team up with Kingsport Cal and talk about Foxy Brown. <laughs> Good one. So, all right, let's get into this show here. Uh, let's see. So we're going to talk a little bit about this Stallone shit. So let me get the article up here because I, I just, I can't believe some of the shit I'm reading. And this is your typical attack on all fronts of an actor producer because he's an actor producer as well as a director writer, amazing writer. He wrote Rocky. Uh, they're attacking this guy because um, he was bullying people on the set. And I don't consider what he did to be bullying. Uh, the people in charge of hiring on this set hired people that he considered substandard to what their needs were. And so he wasn't polite to him. He doesn't have to be. It's not his job to, to placate people's feelings. This is a problem I have with these people. It's all about their feelings all the time. And it's like, look, man, I was in the military. Uh, yeah. You bring that stuff up to a drill instructor, you're going to get smoked. And in real life, people, this is a, a billion dollar, trillion dollar industry. And on a production like uh, uh, Tulsa King, where time is money, and you start fucking around, you're going to find out. But then people go, oh, oh my butt was hurt. I was dead. Blah, blah, blah. And he's bullying. And like, no, he's doing his damn job because you guys aren't. That's how I see this. What do you guys think? I think it's a 70-year-old dude who just speaks the truth. Why'd you buy that? Why'd you, uh, why'd you hire that old fat guy over there with the cane? I don't, I don't want that guy. Get a hot girl in here. Hey, why'd you get, you know, dude is yeah, ugly he, he tub is, of lard, a fat guy he, with a yeah. cane. <laughs> I mean, Tulsa King was all Stallone all the time. That's what it was all about. And for him to come in and he's like, no nonsense or whatever, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And I could care absolutely less about all of this wishy-washy nonsense about you got your feelings hurt because somebody on set. I mean, these people are so nasty to want to go. I mean, Everyone here has probably dealt with, you know, these behind the scenes stories or seen or interacted with these celebrities in real life. And, you know, they all have like 
voracious potty mouth and bad attitude and narcissistic personality disorders or whatever. It's like, oh, well, the one guy got his feelings hurt and we're supposed to do it. I mean, it's just like you said, it's just a hit piece. It's just the media piling here, on Stallone. And yeah, here's I, what I said about that on Twitter. Oh, my God. Did they die? No, they didn't. Because you can survive your feelings getting hurt because you just got to toughen up a little bit. Maybe not. You don't such get a it. Get it. You don't get it. Wars are violence. I'm not here to get it. <laughs> Look, he is the star of that show. He's why it's successful. Without him, that show fails. Absolutely will crash and burn. So <laughs> this external attack on him, and when I say external, there's external forces here in the media that are part of this. But also, there's people within that company that are doing this. And they're trying to do, you know, this is a, a fallback on the whole Me Too thing. And I immediately tune out when people start talking like that. Don't want to listen to it. I didn't listen to it when I was a kid. I'm not going to listen to it as an adult. It's not a viable argument. It's not. When you start talking about feelings, uh, either toughen up or find another job. Keith, your thoughts? He can't speak right now. You heard him. Hold on. Shh. He's talking. He's not talking. I don't know feelings. Where. It's all about Keith's feelings. Um, he stepped away to do black guy stuff. <laughs> so this is just more of the same crap. And they're just going to keep doing this until it fades away. And I just tell people, don't follow this stuff. Don't agree with it. Walk away from it and ignore these assholes. It's the only way we're going to get rid of them because they are dying out. These are like death throw kind of things. They're they're dying and they're just attacking viciously and, and lashing out. And fuck them. Stallone will survive this. If I had Stallone's That's ear, I would ask him, put in the next script for the next season, have a scene where you refer to another character as an old fat lard. You know what I mean? Just I would literally just troll. Right in the script, yeah. Right in the script, in the story, in the scene. Epi you know, episode three, you'll have this in inside the parody baseball. Disc. Yeah, I would absolutely 100%. I'm going to own it. Yeah, that's what I said. So <laughs> he's having a bad connection. I don't know what's going yes. on. I don't know if he's in his, on his computer at home or if he's on the phone. When he's on the phone, he usually has a bad connection. So uh, I just predict this is going to go away. The 48 yeah. hour news cycle. No, nobody can take that. This lie, nobody. He has endured for a long, long time. Man, that guy endured, endured Apollo Creed, <laughs> uh, uh, Club oh, Lane. You're, you're he, talking he about survived, science fiction here. The, uh, the he white survived guy. <laughs> uh, Wesley Snipes. He survived. Uh, what's the other the Dolph Lundgren's character's name? I forgot his name. Drago. 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 Right. Yes, Drago. Drago. Yes, I, Ivan Drago. I will, yeah, I will cautionate you. Whatever he said to him. I think what's even better about Stallone is he's like single-handedly driven some of those franchises, like Rambo and Rocky, but also like the Expendables. Love it or hate Expendables, it wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Stallone. Things like that. I mean, dude has made such a massive footprint on Hollywood, and to think that some hit piece uh, by another no name. I didn't even look at who the who the who the writer was. I was going to look and see who the writer was. What no name writers trying to make a name for themselves with these sort of nonsense? Oh, this is like a tweet. It, this is a story it's written true. about a tweet. Sorry, it's even it's even less down. less valid. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, he's in the car. He's in the car. I can hear Mel talking. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why you've got a shitty connection, Keith. Um. So, um, I was really wanting you here, Keith, to talk about uh, Henry Cavill. So I will push that off, and we can talk about yeah. the, the Joker trailer. Yeah. Are Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I can I can talk about those things. All right. All right. So Especially uh, 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 talking about Highlander. That's what we're going to get into. I was I was getting you to stop talking on your show so much and, and tease that you're going to be talking about it today. So here you go. Run free, my friend. 
Good. And he's gone. <laughs> For those that have been living under a rock, uh, Chad Stahowski, who is one of the uh, uh, major contributors and, and creatives behind the John Wick films, is directing uh, really one of the biggest passion projects any fan could ever want to want to do, which is uh, he's getting a shot at uh, diving into Highlander, and he's going to do it with Henry Cavill. And uh, Henry happened to show up at CinemaCon to uh, basically just let everyone know that he's in the middle of training. It's looking like from the pictures, he's slimming down for this. Uh, and uh, again, as uh, you know, in, in talking about all of this, just the fact that you're going to have the stunt teams that are able to give us some of the best stunts for John Wick, basically giving us some really creative stunts for Highlander with swords. Come on. I mean, that combination alone should have at least sold you one ticket. And what we're looking at here is that... Uh, <clears throat> per an earlier discussion with Chad Stahowski, an earlier interview, uh, there had been discussions about how everything with the original film went right and how and why all the other sequels went wrong. And it looks like Chad Stahowski figured it out, which is the ending to the movie is a definitive ending. There's almost no way to have a, a concluding uh, film after what you did with the first movie. So the idea is to turn the entire story into a trilogy. So to take that first film and turn it into its own trilogy by just stretching the entire story out. And uh, uh, that seems, in my opinion, to probably be the right way to go. I can't think of a way to actually come back with a sequel outside of, of uh, outside of that idea. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of other fans have tried, but, uh, you know, and anyway, uh, I think work will begin towards the latter half of the year and uh, still no announcement as to who's going to play Kurgan. Or who's going to be Ramirez? Uh, no, even who's going to be cast again. Was, Wasn't Fastbender cast or no? No, that was a discussion we, you and I had the last time I brought this up, and I thought Fastbender would be good. But after discussing it, uh, uh, you know, yesterday on my show, uh, I think Martin and I were talking with everyone else, and uh, I think one of the names we came up with would be Antonio Banderas would make a really, really good Ramirez. And uh, mainly because, in my opinion, yeah, because that's got the one I suggest. Spirit. Yeah, he's the one I yes, suggest. Yes, you did. You know what? I will give you credit for that one. I yeah, because I remember our discussion totally right and idea. I brought that up and, and, and you went, oh, Oh, and what? Yeah, right. Thirteenth Warrior. Come on, this guy's perfect. Yeah, for this yeah. Role. He he would make a fantastic Ramirez. Uh, and then uh, someone brought up Idris Elba, and they were trying to say that Idris Elba would make a very good Ramirez. But in my opinion, Idris Elba would make an even better Castigar, because uh, in the original movie, Castigar is a really cool character. He's one of the few immortals that you meet in that movie that is actually a friend of Connor McLeod's. I mean, you only, you only meet two immortals that are his friends. Everybody else is trying to kill him. <laughs> and uh, Castigar, uh, if you're going to stretch out the entire story, Castigar's part can then be bigger in the movie. Because you can see more of the character. Uh, Castigar is the character that uh, uh, you meet in uh, Central Park. 
that uh, yeah, he and uh, Connor. Yeah, you meet him on and his on the death bridge. scene is because some people. I mean, his death scene is is uh, one of the cool effe coolest effects in the film. Yes, in the alleyway and and but sequence. It's, but also you don't you get no emotion in that scene because you, that's right. And I've because you don't spend enough time with it. Yeah, yeah, and and then on top of that, if you're gonna basically stretch everything out. His is a spoiler alert, unless they decide to change it. His is the final death before the third act of the film. So, uh, uh, really, whoever you cast as Castigar has to be is basically going to become someone who the audience should be invested in, and for whom uh, you should at least. Uh, be able to establish that Connor has a really deep friendship. And in many ways, in my opinion, that kind of replaced or at least helped to uh, keep Connor going uh, since he didn't have Ramirez there all those decades. So, uh, yeah, it's just, I think it's going to be a great film. And again, Chad Stahowski is just beyond excited, which is great. He's kept up his excitement through all of this. Even when some of us were, I mean, we've been talking about this since we started the show. So to finally get around to actually having this go into production, fantastic dupes. And this is just one of many films that were discussed during CinemaCon. Uh, I think uh, by next year, CinemaCon, no they should be able to have some footage. And there's still no confirmation on Fastbender. That's still just a rumor, right? Yeah, yeah. It, Fastbender would be really cool, but I don't know how he would stack up physically against uh, uh, Henry Cavill. And so I've evolved my thought a little bit. And I know this is going to sound weird considering they, they have a movie coming up. But Alan Reichens, who plays uh, Reacher, would make a really good, uh, uh, he would be, I think, an even better Kurgan. Because he is a big guy. I mean, when you see pictures of Alan standing next to Henry Cavill, Alan's got a, Alan's good size standing next to Henry. And if Henry's going to slim down physically, that'll even really. He's when you say slim down, Alan he's be losing, bigger. you're saying that he's losing some of his body mass from his muscles. He's yes. Gonna, yes. He's, he's, cause lean, he did it he's for, lean uh, uh what he's doing. He's getting more lean. Yeah. He's, he's, he's leading up. He, he did that for a man from uncle. And, uh, yeah, and, uh by the way, I brought this still, up the other day. It's not, if not for Army Hammer, we would have gotten a sequel to that film. Oh, jeez. Uh, that is a film and, where and the again, star hurt the film. Yeah. I, 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 look, you can come up with, you can't tell me that nobody would be willing to do that if they got everybody back together again to do it. I mean, our Army I Hammer would, would love be to back. It. it was a great movie. Um, I mean, I who, would, his, who would you? Uh, I thought Cavill's yeah. performance as Solo was outstanding. Yeah. yeah. So who would you get to be Ilya Kiliakin? Uh, I would get a uh, Russian or, actor, or or if I wanted to honor the original series, have a Scotsman play a Russian. <laughs> and get, Kevin Kidd would be really good in that role. I think he's a little you know too old. Kevin Kidd is right. Uh, yeah, he's like 49, 50 years old, right in that area. I yeah, I wouldn't. I would go that old. I, I would. I would do that. Uh, again, I keep. I know I keep mentioning his name, but and, and I know I haven't really seen too many scenes from the movie. But Alan again would make a really good Ilya Kirak. <laughs> but Gerard Butler is keep... also in that age group. Um, wow. If you're gonna go to do like they did in the original film, have a Scotsman play a Russian, 
Uh, another one uh, that I think's young enough is James McAvoy. He could pull it off. Uh, Ewan might be a little too old. Yeah. He would be another one I'd like to consider. But to be honest with you... I do, uh, I do agree Russian with you that it would have to be... Yeah, a Russian actor would probably fare even better. To be more realistic, I would get an actual yeah. Russian actor. And um, yeah. I'm trying to think of any that... Because like the ones I like are too old now. Um, uh, let me look it up. In their... 30s. Anyway, You'd want while you're doing in their that, while you're doing that, I will also say this. Um, Henry Cavill, as of right now, is still probably the, the, the biggest name as far as geeks and nerds go, as far as being one of us in the business. His dedication to uh, everything that he plays in gives him so much credibility. And uh, since the rumors have been out there that he might be playing a Wolverine variant uh, in the upcoming uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, <laughs> if he ends up doing that, his stock is going to go up even further. You know, personally, I don't think I would have placed him in there as a Wolverine variant. Uh, that's just me, you know. But Kevin Feige can do whatever over there for now. And uh, <laughs> uh, it seems like uh, uh, Kevin's going to go for broke because now it looks like he may have worked some of his magic to get uh, Robert Downey Jr. to consider coming back. And after that glowing mm. response, in a recent magazine interview, it looks like RDJ is beyond open for it, meaning that uh, maybe even Iger, given the current situation, has authorized go ahead, offer him whatever he wants. Ah, so, cool. but I'm telling hey, you right now, hey, here you go, here you go, Keith, right here. This young guy right here is a very okay. good actor, uh, Russian born, solid actor. He is uh, uh, trilingual, as I recall. I, he speaks, I know I, I heard him speak German and English. So, good actor, and wow. I think he'd be very good as a, a younger, because Solo should be older, I feel. And um, I think that would make for a good dynamic. And he's, I don't know if he's going to good with comedy, but he's got, he's good looking. Well, and uh, he's a good actor. Who owns Man of Uncle now? What studio well, was Ken that? Was that Sony? Who was that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought that was Sony. But it's a, it, it, but that was a Guy Ritchie film. So uh, uh, again, who would turn down being in a movie with Henry Cavill directed by Guy Ritchie? It's MGM, <laughs> so maybe Amazon. That, is it MGM? Your career, right Amazon there. owns them. Then that's. Who um, owns I, it. I just can't see this making Cavill's radar screen with the amount of projects that he has on his plate, pretty much at all times. Especially if he's going to end up dipping well, his toe into some sort of Marvel. He's now kind thing. of in control of, what's of what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's I, at I, that I, point well, now. But, but I'd like to circle back to. Oh, but, sorry, go but ahead. the other thing. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say in answer to what you're saying. Hold on, Keith. The reason why on, he Keith. would consider it. Oh. Keith, hold on just a second. You got a delay. Uh, go ahead, Pops. What were you going to say? And then No, no, no. I wanted to finish his thought on that first. Then I want to circle back to okay. Highlander real quick and ask him a question about right. his thoughts on Highlander. Okay, go ahead, Keith. I'm sorry. Well, the, re the reason why I think he would do it is because he is completely out of the running for Bond. And that was a part that he wanted. So this is as close as that he will ever get to being James Bond is the next best thing is well, portraying this so other close character. To that the role over Craig. Yeah. Yeah. But this, this is another way of doing it because this is another character that Ian Fleming created, which is Napoleon Solo. So uh, playing that part, I think is about as close as he will get. And you're right, though, Pops. He is going to be very, very busy. 
Uh, I don't think he will ever really slow down uh, between now and now. I think he's very busy, but he, he will be busy on, on projects that will interest him. And that's the important thing. He won't just be sleepwalking like certain other performers. You know that every project he's going to be in from here on out, he is invested in fully. So that's a good thing. I think that's what fans have always liked about him. Obviously, the Witcher thing even cemented that, I think, even deeper for fans. Like, fans just yeah. really respect the fact that you were a big fan of the IP you are working for, and part of the separation become at the hands of people who are not fans of that. So uh, let me ask you, though, Keith, because yeah. um, I'm actually going to be the naysayer of the group. I'm not, I'm not thrilled with the idea of doing, even with Chad, even with Henry, of doing Highlander, and redoing the first movie. I was hopeful that they would do something that would be more prequel driven, maybe deal with ancestors, mm -hmm. you know, McLeod I think they're ancestors. going to be doing that. I think that is in there. Okay. They, the one thing that they talked about was that they're expanding on the Correct. universe. Right. No, I've read the characters. quotes. Um, and I yeah. think that's a good idea. I right. think that re you know, touching on the things in the story of Ramirez, it's a necessary thing that if you're going to do it, you, and, you're going to require that fans maybe you yeah don't feel that way but a lot of fans want to see uh, uh a rehashing of that story and a little deeper and because as good as the film is it's it had some problems and i would like yes. to see those things kind of fixed in a new film well um, well also expanding on kurgan because you only know about kurgan look the movie, oh, yeah, he was had much a few better problems. character when he was written. Yeah, but I mean, the the thing about it is, is that there is room to expand stuff if you, as long as the writers that you get are really good. You can't just depend on having a little bit of story and a whole lot of action. And I think that's one of those things that having someone who actually is a fan. I think you're better off, in my opinion, in that direction than you are just being someone who's just going to do whatever, you know, who's going to take sort of oh, a sure. cookie cutter approach and, and be a person that is of the studio or of whoever is financing this. I think for this, you want to turn it into an epic. Okay. You want to, you want to have this be not just, we're just going to lazily make three movies. No, you want this to be in. So I think expanding on everybody's story makes it easier to go out and get really talented people to play these parts. If you're going to have Antonio Banderas, it's not just the fact that Antonio has to be able to wield a sword. You have to buy into the fact that Ramirez is 2,000 years old by the time he even meets Connor McCloud. So you can have a little bit of stuff going into that yeah, that's and touch on a little bit more. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then and I would I would love you can to also see ex you know a, a Clancy Brown Kurgan grandfather setting up the Kurgan that we get later on. I think that'd be a great way to pass the torch. <laughs> it gives people the type of fan service that they can enjoy, but it doesn't derail yeah. the whole story. I think it would and be I nice think, to have the actors yeah. in there in some uh, fashion. Hey uh, yeah, but, guys, I want to read some of the comments that's uh, up here right now. Um, let's see, we got uh, starred comment from Kingsport Cal. For those who have been living under a rock, famed and prestige comic book writer, artist Ed Piscor uh, has uh, ended his life uh, because of uh, being, it's cancel culture. It's cancel culture is poison, period. And I don't like it when either side gets into it. Not, it really bugs me when I see people who are anti, uh, well, don't you cancel this person, blah, blah, blah. Then they turn right around and do the same thing. And I don't like that. I don't play that game. I think it's wrong. Don't mess with people's livelihoods. Don't do not do that shit. It's evil. If you want to know what evil is, what led to this man's uh, death is what I consider to be evil. Um, thanks for posting that, Cal. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Wolverine 66. I read that Staleski uh, will be using Queen's music from the original film, which I think is brilliant. That'd be magnificent. Yes, yeah. it would be because it's one of the greatest rock soundtracks. Absolutely. I mean, it kicked the hell out well, of Toto soundtrack for Dune. 
period. Well, also, I agree, and also using the orchestral music because the 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 theme. Well, you'll I need mean, a, a really score. You'll need a score. But uh, hold on, Keith. I want to, I, I want to get to these. Um, Wolverine sixty six. Antonio Banderas has been a popular choice for Ramirez among fans. Yeah, I said this weeks ago when all this stuff was starting to pop up. That's who I would pick to play Ramirez. He's perfect for the role. Perfect. This is like how perfect? Like uh, Patrick Stewart as uh, Xavier. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Some asshole named Martin Acosta Santana said, uh, I prefer Adrian Paul. He became a swordsman. His features in tone with uh, how Ramirez looked by Connery. Yes. he. In fact, I used to say that if they ever did a biopic about Connery, Adrian Paul should play him because he looks so much like him and, and his accent. Uh, and he does have a connection to the IP, and it would be nice to see him in the film in some form. Uh, but, you know, he is referred to by the late Bob Anderson, uh, who was the sword master. I mean, he'd been working since the 20s in, in cinema. He worked with Errol Flynn, Basil Rathbone, uh, choreographing their fight scenes. And... Uh, he was the trainer for Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, and he was also the stand-in for Darth Vader in the fight scenes, the lightsaber scenes in Empire Strikes Back. Um, and I do believe I he did some of the fight scenes in uh, Return of the Jedi. But he said the best student he ever had was Adrian Paul. I have a in question. An uh, you know... Adrian has a he's a source master now and have a has a, his own school. He teaches classes. And, yep. Yes. Uh, is is his school involved in at any level with this movie? With this I haven't heard production? a thing. I've heard nothing. I don't know who there because they have a sword master trainer for this film. I don't know who it is. It may be the dude that did uh, the Star Wars prequel trilogy. I don't know. Um, he's a good Nick dude. Nick Gellard. Yeah, yeah, that dude. That's the guy. If they get him, he would be perfect for the sword play. But they may also be going to somebody with a martial arts uh, and sword skill. So I don't know. Um, let's see. Castigear had uh, more scenes, but yes, they were cut, and the footage was uh, lost in that fire. Uh, I remember that shit. Yeah. Uh, good chunk of deleted material lost forever. There's no negatives, no positives. No, nothing left of the prints. Possibly some video footage. But they still have the it. script. They still have the script. And, and Stahowski would have access to that. That's the reason why I said you could pump it up to the point where you could have someone like an Idris Elba in this movie if you make well, the role of Castigear worth it. And I think there's, yeah, there's enough agree. worth it. So uh, Wolverine also says that what Warner Brothers did Man from Uncle. And it is a, a Guy Ritchie film. You know, another sad thing, I brought this up because I uh, uh, I introduced Anima, my girlfriend, to a lot of great films. And I introdu introduced her to one of my favorite films, Rock and Rolla, by Guy Ritchie. And she loved that movie. And at the end of it, it says, you know, they're going to be yeah, coming back in a new film. And they pulled a buckaroo bonsai, man, and we're never oh, going to see yeah. the sequel. Yeah, And it's sad. So, I always uh, say that since if, if Warner Brothers owns it, it's even less likely we're going to get more material anytime soon. It's already been almost yeah, 10 years. Soon. So I just, yeah. yeah, I don't know what they'll do. Yeah. Uh, Sentai Ranger Donnie or Don Don, uh, what's what's his full previous name? Don Don Ranger Power. 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 Don Don Ranger Power. Power. That, it Ranger that, or that, Power Ranger? Yeah, it's a Ranger Power because okay. I needed to be. Power Ranger, so it rhymes with the song Don Don Power Ranger. I, I think he made yeah. it on Don purpose. Don Power Ranger. Yeah, there you go. In other Paramount related news, CBS, The Talk is ending after 15 seasons, and I'm okay with that. Sure, not everyone loves CBS answer to ABC's The View. I don't like either of them. It's like watching Chickens Cluck. I just, I don't understand it. It's weird. <laughs> hey, hey, don't mess with chickens, please. <laughs> Gary, that was massages. No, misogyny requires hatred. I'm just not interested. There's a difference. You can say I'm sexist if you want, and you can get away with that. Uh, I love the music of Queen and the Doors equally, to be honest. Uh, not me. I, I I was never a fan of the Doors. 
Um, what is it with YouTube and not sending our not out notifications? I'm sorry, Penny. I don't know what to say. It, it's bullshit. It really is. Uh, any more good comments here, Martin? No. Uh, keep starring them uh, when you get a good comment. Whoa. Uh, so uh, let's get back to the discussion here. Are we done with Highlander or we, we want to uh, go over a little what, more on that? What, one last thing I want to say. I want to highlight Michael Kamen, the late Michael Kamen, who, mm, whose work in music is yeah. incredible. And he composed the music for the first Highlander film. I think you should at least attempt to at least bring back a lot of that music also. Because a lot of the music he created for that film really helped to make the film. Uh, I just, I, I'm a big Michael Kamen fan. I've enjoyed all the music that he did for the original first Die Hard film. Uh, all the music he did for Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Uh, I enjoyed the music that, like the, uh, uh, the silliness of that film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, he was, he was really good at it. And I, I miss his, uh, uh, collaborations with Eric Clapton, you know, uh, the work that he did with Pink Floyd. I mean, this is a guy that knew what he was doing and, and he have, have uh, the Wikipedia page for Cayman. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, here he is, uh, uh, working on a song composing a piece i'm sorry <laughs> you're not sorry, uh -huh. <laughs> <I'm> not sorry. <laughs> michael came in <laughs> no i love right, with the uh -oh. with the bad with the bad pun joke i'm going to have to dip out not because of the pun joke but because it is yeah, top get, of the get out of here good. pops i'm sick of your okay. old guy bullshit i know it's, it's, <laughs> oh, uh, off. Off. i'm so <laughs> glad you came on with this dude it's really yeah, I mean, thanks for the invite that was really cool and i will try to make some fridays in particular that has of the days I, and stuff you guys I got love going that, on that, that does work so I love uh, having know. you, man. It was good hanging out with you. Look forward. He'll be releasing the show that uh, it, it, our interview on Sunday. Yep. So I hope everybody uh, pops in to, to watch that interview. It was yes. interesting, to yes. say the least. And, uh, love to see you guys more often. And uh, thanks for everything. And uh, you guys take care. Have a good weekend. You bet, buddy. Happy Friday. Thanks very much. You too, Pops. Man, your joke was so bad that you, you sent away Pops. <laughs> <laughs> I can live with that. And Ariel, yes, you freaked the hell out of me. Thank you. <laughs> and speaking of Highlander, um, where is it here? I want to look it up because, uh, yeah, in seven days, Tom and Gary will be doing Highlander on Saturday afternoon matinee. Wow. Looking forward to, to doing a breakdown with him on that film. Uh, just, I, oh. I mean, I am such a huge fan of that film. And by the way, if you don't know much about Bob Anderson, go read up on that gentleman. He was an amazing uh, mm -hmm. sword choreographer and trainer. Just a master swordsman. He could do any style of sword fighting, man. The guy, like he, also, he did the uh, stuff that looked like samurai fighting for uh, Star Wars. He would turn right around and do fencing, and then he would do broadsword combat. Uh, just incredible uh, sword master. And he'd been yeah. going since the 1920s, man. That's that's a wow. long-ass career. Um, so I would show you this is, uh, like to... next week. I'm just showing this. Hold on. This is for next week. Don't forget to sign up. And don't forget tomorrow... Uh, we are going to be doing a breakdown of another great Christopher Lambert film, Grey Stoke, The Legend of Tarzan. Ah, yes. What's happening to Connor? What's happening to Connor then? There. Um, uh, he met up with Candy. Uh, <laughs> they call it the quickening. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. We're gonna let that I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So, I'd also um, like to at least highlight uh, 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 Gregory Wyden, the, the the young man who came up with all of this stuff. He didn't get talked about enough, but the dude was incredible. And uh, it, it was his idea 
that created all of this. So, absolutely. So we've covered Stallone. We've covered Henry Cavill. Now we can get onto the the other subjects uh, that we wanted to talk about. One um, is the um, Bleeding Fool did a, a nice little article here. Uh, talking about how some of the fans were not very pleased with the uh, final release of the hard R-rated Joker 2 first trailer. And the biggest shock in the trailer is that Harley Quinn is actually a patient in the hospital. What? Instead of being his doctor. That's what they're showing in the trailer. Did you not watch the trailer? Oh, no. I have no interest in this. We're discussing it. <laughs> you discuss it. You're part of the discussion, Martin. No. So not uh, people are having a negative reaction to it. I consider myself one of those people. Very un uh, unhappy with that, with what Todd Phillips did there. Well, Again, you got to understand this entire project technically should not exist. This project was only put in motion to help Walter Hamada save his, his job at the time that he, he okayed it. Because, well, because of how, he screwed up with the first film. That's right. That's right. Uh, and he so, let them have all their money. That's like, that's like 20th Century Fox telling George Lucas, yeah, we're not interested in the merchandising. That's how stupid that was. Yes. <laughs> it's exactly like that. <laughs> it is. It's exactly uh, the same. And and in the end, it didn't help it, him keep his job at all. You know? Uh, uh, fact, I think it's important, Ariel. Job. I think it's important to stick to the fucking story. I just... It's weird to change the story that way. Well, then why use that character? Uh, why... Use that character if you're going to do that. Well, Make they changed the, character. Uh, they changed the whole Joker story for that. For that one. Yeah, he's not. This is what. Look, have if you've read DC comics, you know there's what's called Elseworld stories, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what this is. That's all it yes. is. So I that, have no that's... problem with that. I do have a problem with them taking a character like Harley Quinn and then just making her a patient. I'm like, but that's not the dynamic of their relationship. He won her over through his insanity. <laughs> and uh, in this one, she's just as deranged as he is. And I'm just like, eh, they should have just called her something else. Because at least yeah, he's I, following I, certain ideas that have been yeah. approached before with the Joker. It's not like they yeah. went completely off res with him. I need to. I, I can see that. Someone. I, I, I personally. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Martin. I need to address some harassment going on in the chat. This, this would not be tolerated. Uh, no, no, she's <laughs> right, Martin. <laughs> oh, now my even my boss harasses me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, I don't harass you, Martin. Oh, hey, but Wade's you're, dropped You're in. the only one who treats me with respect. Hi, Wade. <laughs> um, Keith doesn't respect you when you're not around, though. He talks more shit about you than anybody. I said he treats oh, me. <laughs> I love stirred up shit. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, I used to say wow. things to people like, you know, Really? You, you like him? But he's the one that said that you like to <laughs> fart in a bathtub and bite at the bubbles. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Look at look at this comment. <laughs> well, yeah, because the first film is clearly he's an unreliable narrator. That's why you don't know what's really what's real and what isn't. Well, he even he doesn't know what is real or not. I mean. He imagined I don't know if it's going to be him yeah. telling the story again. I think I, it'd be crazy not to. But when Quinn beats Superman, yeah. Wonder Woman, and Batman it, 
in hand to hand. Oh, I don't even want to talk. Shut up, Shinovsky. Uh, I We don't talk about that game. It's stupid. Uh, what was this? Uh, I saw. What did I see? A question from Wade. I saw a question. Good. From yes, Wade. he was asking if if we're enjoying the, the Fallout show. Look, I'm going to start watching it because Mr. H liked it. And I trust H because I don't want to waste my time. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of yeah. wasting time on shows. Uh, my time is precious. So um, I'm going to try it because he said it is enjoyable. So It's enjoyable. Uh, I've been watching it but uh, one, one episode per day because I am against binging. And... The first episode has serious problems with editing, and it ruins the pacing. If you can get past that, try. I'm I'm watching just two two episodes. I've been I've watched. I I've been entertained. Is the most that I can say. And I'm, I'm I'm still not in that moment to okay. Fuck this. I'm not watching anymore. <laughs> All right. What you can do sometimes you can actually say something if you want to say what you really are thinking. You don't know how to say it in English. Just blather it out in Spanish, and then I will go over to YouTube and watch you talking and turn on auto translate. The fuck does that mean? <laughs> go on. Tell me, <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, look, I'm a big Goggins fan. Uh, I love the uh -oh. guy. He's the only reason why I watched season one of that SEAL team show on the History Channel. And I didn't like that show. And I hated the second season. Goggins is awesome wow. in the show. I even he, watched, he, I, didn't, I had no interest in that uh, principal show. With him and the dude from Eastbound and Down, because um, I most of the time I don't find that guy funny. Uh, he's just sort of annoying. But I I got hooked on that show. Principals was that what it was called? Where they're both sharing the role as principal of the school until somebody else steps in. And I ended up finding that show very interesting. And Goggins is really the reason that show uh, was awesome. And I've got, that's all I can say. What, Walter Goggins could read the phone book, and I would watch him read it. Dude, Shinotsky has the whole thing very well condensated in this statement. The look is the right look. The character need, needs a little work. And this one, yes. That's interesting. Okay, because the first season I enjoyed of Westworld. From that on, it was garbage. Um, let's see. What is this? Uh, Zach says, uh, the story in episode one is completely nonsensical, at least the vault portion. Goggins is great, though. Uh, and that's what everybody is saying. Is just, he's worth the price of admission. And I feel that way, too. And I'm excited that he's coming back for season two of the new Justified series. He's back, baby. He was in the final episode. They did a great job of uh, keeping that a secret. They did. They made it sound like they hadn't talked to him and shit. No, he was he was there for the final episode, and it was fucking awesome. Uh, anybody that did, hasn't watched the the new season of Justified, where he's I think he's in, living in Florida now because he moved. Uh, great freaking series. It was awesome. Uh, let's see. The other problem with the editing because uh, you you're outside the vault before Lucy goes outside. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, that'd be kind of weird. I'll watch. I'll tell you what I think about it, guys. I I think they do. They did that in order to show all the characters. Introduce you, all the. You know, I love this. I love it when our our viewers criticize Martin. Thank you. Okay, and I am wrong. <laughs> About what? <laughs> Something about the back door. I don't know. Wait, I, I like the show. I'm still watching the show. <laughs> I just uh, point in some details, like editing. Editing is a big detail. Yeah, I've never played the games. 
but I've got a lot of friends that love that 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 franchise. That really do. Uh, so, um, and by the way, uh, this week uh, on Wednesday, I may actually, instead of playing Xbox Live, I may uh, try playing the uh, uh, campaign on Modern Warfare Three, because I realized the other day, uh, well, I logged into it and I'm like, oh my god, I've, I've never played the campaign, huh? And I heard it was too short. That was a big complaint I heard. So instead of playing Xbox Live, I may actually just go into the campaign and see how many times I die before I, I figure things out. What's this? What's What did Ariel say? You're just wrong, Martin, when you have been right. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't get that. You are the t what is this about? Why are why Everything. are they fucking? Oh. Why are they attacking you, Martin? <laughs> oh, Ariel doesn't need a uh, the, particular thing. Martin is wrong. More like Gary forgetting Gary backdoor videos. Ah, uh, I don't know. No, no, but, but uh, according to Wade, my assessment on Fallout is wrong. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? Okay. So anyway, just to, to wrap up here, uh, Keith, what are your thoughts? Did you watch the trailer? Nice poster, though. I do like this poster. Yes. I'm not a fan of Gaga, though I think she's got an amazing voice. Um, I just, um, the idea of it being a musical kind of bothers me, but I understand yeah. it's all in his, their head yeah. that they're sharing this madness of living in a musical. Uh, so I'm like, I kind of like that idea. Uh, but <laughs> to have her not have been I... Dr. Uh, <laughs> uh, Harley I, Quinzel. I get it. Yeah, I, I get what they're trying to do. And I know that this is an Elseworlds. So I, I think compared to you, I think I'm a little more lenient about some of the changes. I, I'm all good with changes as long as you're not saying that this is the actual way that the characters are and that this is not a attached to the main universe of movies that they have, that they're beginning to, to, to roll out. To me, the Joker is just a whole different thing because you got people that are wanting like, uh, there are certain fans that want Robert Pattinson to be a part of this. And it's like, no, 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 no. No, no, we don't need we don't need the addition of dumb seven, okay? Um, <laughs> we just need to well, allow a hate uh, for Gaga. Todd, <laughs> yeah, they, look at it. These I, are all women. You know what? Her. Without really, yeah, I, I, I don't can't, have I can't any explain it. Well, this is all our good buddy is... 24 7 Fusion Media here. This is what he said, Keith. This fucking trailer, LOL, okay. Lady Gaga sounds like she's been sucking down cigarettes when she talks with the raspy ass voice, sounding nothing like Harley Quinn, looking nothing like Harley Quinn, and acting nothing like Harley Quinn. It's not looking good at all. That was from our good buddy. Yeah, I. My uh, thing is. Uh, if if you enjoyed the first movie, have a little faith in in Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix to do what they need to do to make this good. And again, you got to understand, this was never meant to be a part of of really anything else. This was just a project that was really just a one off that's been given a second chance, mainly because it made a whole lot of money. Oh, and it won an Academy Award. You know, and not just any Academy Award. It won Best Actor. So far, this is the only comic book movie to have been awarded the Best Actor Academy Award. And so, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna take another take another run at this. You know, of course, that was after uh, uh, Toby and Anne decided to back up all that truck full of money to give to Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix to, to totally do this project. So, yeah, I, I don't mind. 
you know, it's not going to affect me one way or another. What I will mind is whoever James Gunn's going to eventually uh, make, you know, decide who's going to be Batman. And again, you got Alan. St again, I keep mentioning Alan. I might as well just take him on as a client. I might as well just represent the guy. But <laughs> Alan wants to be Batman, and I don't blame him because he looks like Batman. <laughs> so um, I don't mind. Now, if we get another trailer in 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 a month or two, and and things, you know, I change my mind, I'll I'll let everybody know. But for the most part, I don't mind. You know, I, I think, as I was saying yesterday, the only thing I do mind is given what we saw, I think, Martin, didn't you read to me what the budget was for this movie? No. Oh, you didn't? Okay. You another Martin? I, Are you seeing another just, Martin? <laughs> no, no, no. But, um, all I can say is if they end up spending an ungodly amount of money on this, then yeah, I will the budget start, was way to really... higher than the first film. Yeah. That's not good. What about it? What about you it? Know, says, from what the I table. saw. Oh, jeez, That's too much. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Boy, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, You're not gonna be still up there, no. 5150 is here. Uh, plus, our good friend, uh, uh, Peter Vinkman fan site, uh, Vinkman's girl is here. And Penny did make it, and she did finally get her notification <laughs> late. <laughs> By the way, every, everybody's giving me the business today. We have reached that moment of the show. <laughs> you, you, do this, you can <laughs> go for it. Okay. Wow. See you after the ad. Meet the Seattle Vigilante. Like so many comic heroes, this warrior hides his identity. But his identity isn't the only secret he has to keep. After grievous wounds received during combat, Tier 1 operator John Russell begins to recover and comes to terms with his new reality of being an amputee. And as he learns how to use his new prosthetic limb, he finds himself caught up in the bureaucratic red tape that too many wounded veterans experience, the exhausting med board process. Out of sheer frustration, John takes it out on the criminal scum of the city. But when reality kicks in, John realizes he started something that's having an impact on the greater world around him, and thus has to reevaluate his motives. And moreover, just how far is John willing to go to finish this war he's declared against the criminals in Seattle? And will he even survive? From the creator of IDW's award-winning graphic novel, Code Word Geronimo, comes a new story about a different kind of warrior, Vindicated Inc., the first of its kind disabled veteran action hero comic. The Vindicated Inc. graphic novel crowdfunding campaign on FundMyComic.com is provided in the description of this video. We hope you become a contributor. Please share this link. Thank you. Hey guys, don't forget to click that like, subscribe, and notification button. We appreciate you watching the show. Now, back to it. Diabetes. 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 Um, the last thing I want to talk about, really, uh, uh, is the new trailer drop for The Penguin. And as much as I did not like The Batman, I actually liked The Penguin in the film. And so... With the focus on the penguin, I'm actually going to watch this show. How about you guys? Did you watch the trailer? No, 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 I didn't. Yeah, no, you didn't. It's well, I know you movie. did, but I, I know did. Martin didn't. And I know you feel the same way about the film. But what do you think about this new show? I'm willing to give it a chance, but I will say this. Um, uh, I am, uh, first and foremost, the caliber of talent that you have 
both in terms of the makeup and the look of this movie. They gave it a very, it's, it's got a very cinematic feel. And that's a good thing because you want to make something that at least feels like it is a part of the movie. As much as I didn't like it, I at least like them trying to do that. I hope the scripts are good. I hope that all of the additional actors that they're putting into this are going to be good. Uh, do I wish to see more as far as another movie? Personally, no. But I mean, yeah, that is in the second term. You know, no. not going to watch it. They had one chance to get it's just almost, and they lost. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's a cluster. And again, the further the further along we go, it just seems like there is a reason why all of the Abrams acolytes are not doing so well. You know? I, and that is just, true, because he is an Abrams acolyte. Yeah. And, and also... I hope Warner Brothers just, I mean, I I hope Warner Brothers can at least uh, make a final decision about what they're going to do with that uh, Batman cartoon that they put together. Because according to what I've been hearing, they're pretty much done with it. They're just looking for a distributor. Uh, I'm not looking forward to seeing that. And I'm a big Batman fan. But because Abrams... And this particular director are all are all over that. I'm not interested in it. I mean, for the first time in a long time, I can definitely sit here and say, "Yeah, I'm I'm not interested in their Batman cartoon." I'm yeah, not. I I uh, I'm not either. Um, I just saw something. I need to uh, pop this back up there. Before you play the campaign live, maybe learn how to drive, Gary. And it it is funny because I got to tell you. Um, when you use a controller, like I do, I use a game controller. It is a bitch to drive in games yeah. with those things. Uh, I'm I'm all over the road when I played uh, La Noire, man. <laughs> like I seriously, I was like hitting newsstands, uh, bumping people, uh, walking across the sidewalk. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> crazy. You didn't you didn't see John playing Cyberpunk when he got in the in the vehicles. He was the biggest menace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm a terrible Throwing driver. John under the bus. With when you got a controller, man, if it's if you don't have the steering wheel, trying to drive with the controller is a bitch, and uh, I hated it. And uh, same thing with uh, uh, Modern Warfare. My least favorite parts of the campaigns is anytime you're in a vehicle. I just I hate that. I like it when you're a gunner on a vehicle or a plane or a helicopter. I do not like it when you're put in a position of having to drive. Fuck that. I'm out. I will never learn to drive in those games, man. It is just too freaking hard. So uh, so anyway, I wanted to point out, because these are the things they're talking about that's in the film. In the teaser trailer above, Cobblepot talks about an older gangster named Rex Calabrese uh, that he admired when he was a kid. Calabrese is a character that debuted somewhat recently in the DC Comics universe as the man who ran Gotham before Falcone. He was called The Lion, and he debuted in Batman Eternal number 1 under his alias of Leo uh, Leone. He would later be revealed as Calabrese and the father of Selina Kyle. The movie establishes that Falcone is Selina's father, which is something that had been somewhat canon since The Long Halloween, but was changed in 2014 with the introduction of Calabrese. Cobblepot speaks of Calabrese as being dead, which he was believed to be in the comic or believed to be in the comics until he showed up as Leon uh, or Leone. So it's hard to tell if the character is going to pop up in the new series this fall and if he will have a familiar connection to Catwoman. So, and, and that's the one thing they were talking about. So, what are your thoughts on that, Keith? Oh, he's muted. Well, I think they are milking the Corleone name. Oh, right into a void. Yeah, Leone, Corleone. Ah. Um, but Leone is a real name. Yeah. Uh, I just I don't know what to think of it. To be honest with you, all I know is uh, 
I'm engaged enough with his performance as the penguin to watch this show. He, because he was the Harold, only good character. He, he was, was the, the only, only good thing in that movie. Period. Um, I mean, when he mocks Gordon and Batman, that at that moment he was the audience to me because I was openly mocking them watching the film in my head. <laughs> and then the penguins do it, and I'm like, the penguin is the Greek chorus. Because the Greek chorus represents the audience. So I, I like that. I'm looking forward to this. And I think Farrell is an amazing actor. Uh, if you've never seen the movie uh, in Bruges, watch that movie. Yes. It is one of my favorite uh, gangster hitman films ever made. It is really freaking good. And I could not believe how good he is. So uh, Martin and Gary are always welcome on the streams. So yes, I, I've shown it twice. You don't see it. He has. He's inviting us, all the three of us, to one of uh, to his uh, review of the first uh, season of Fallout. This nineteen. Uh, I'm when? For the nineteen. The nine. Yes, I'm. I'm looking for the. It's going to be a Friday. Uh, oh, that's tough. That is tough, man. Because um, here I do. I do this show and then I, I try to rest up and to try to be on Loki's show. And I don't always make it on Loki's show. We lost Keith. Yes. Apparently Mel killed him for driving bad. I shouldn't joke like that. No. You know, life could be very ironic. Uh, Martin Gary or his welcome El Rata L Larata. Uh, uh, watch a lot of films, but not one that takes place in Bruges, in fucking Bruges. Uh, that's, I think that's a line in the film, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because by in, the, in the Irish movie, actor. in the movie, there's a a, a company. Producing a movie in Bruges. A movie, that's right. And he's dating the, the lead actress, and she's trying to, ah, are you going to see the movie? But because he hates the town, he said, no, I'm not watching that movie. Not even for you. <laughs> yeah, the film stars uh, uh, Colin Farrell, uh, Brendan Gleeson, and Ray Imogen Poots. Oh, well. oh, and Imogen Poots is in there. That's right. The love. She's the one he falls in love with. Uh, but uh, Ray Fiennes is their boss, and he's really good. Uh, you just don't get to see Rafe play such a slimy bad guy, mm. and he's but, really but, just. But he has up. a but he has a code, and he adheres strictly to it. Oh, you're talking about the character, right? Yeah, Keith lost signal, so he just yes. he left the message. So. Oh man, yes. When I saw that movie, I was in awe of the beauty of the of the city. I so want to live there, man. So, well, this is sad. Uh, I wanted to try a new game, and I don't know oh. if we're going to be able to do it because Martin is the only one there. So, Martin, uh, you guys in the audience, you can play on this too by asking questions. And uh, and you have to determine if what I'm saying is a true story or if I've pulled a fast one on you. And here's the new intro for this segment. So, with this new segment is uh, based on an English show that I love. <laughs> I watch religiously; and it makes me laugh. Uh, it is a they give points, but there's no money. There's nothing to really win. It's just one team beats the other team, and this one it's just going to be you and me, and the audience, our our wonderful uh, chat. And in this, I'm going to tell you. Bye. A story that I that was typed up earlier, and you have to determine if the story is true, 
and you you can ask me questions and you can try to catch me if I'm lying. Uh, and we'll go for hey D Bud Martin, what's up, my friend? Yeah, yeah we'll get the show all over again. It's uh, <laughs> we are with without kids, so it's gonna be a little difficult. But here we go, guys. Uh, anybody's allowed to ask me questions, and you have to determine if I'm lying or telling the truth. Uh, and the question is, or the statement is, <clears throat> I once made a fellow employee count the rocks on the roof of a restaurant that we worked at. And from there, ask questions. Feel free. Martin, you have any questions? <sighs> yeah, Banshees of Inishran is a great movie. It's uh, Again, it's Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell. Same director, writer-director. All right. I once made a fellow employee count the rocks on top of the, the restaurant roof. Wow. Um, first, his name was uh, uh, Dewey. Uh, it was a nickname, and uh, he was a tall, gangly character. Kind of had a big Adam's apple, uh, big old honker. But he is sweet, and he was kind of in his own weird way good looking. But he was really, really slow. And I worked with Jim Woodward and Mike Beatty at that McDonald's. McDonald's. Uh, 2476 uh, on Jefferson Davis Highway in Fredericksburg, Virginia. It's still there. And uh, we're trying to get him out of our way because we're getting ready to do an inspection. Not us, our bosses. Had people coming in from corporate to do an inspection. And we were trying to figure out how to get Dewey out of the way. So I came up with the idea we could send him up to the roof to do something. And Jim's like, uh, we could have him count the rocks on the roof and tell him that we need to have uh, an approximate count of how many rocks are on the roof. For the, That'll be part of the inspection. We need to have that answer. And so I'm like, great idea. So because I was his team leader uh, on the crew, I told him to go up on the roof and count the rocks. And um he got really kind of depressed and I mean, it made all of us kind of feel bad. So we're just trying to get him rid of this guy. And so we, um, I simplified it for him. And I said, what you need to do is measure out one square foot on the corner of a building and count all the rocks within that square foot and then measure the roof and do the math to how many rocks were on the roof. That approximation will be good enough. They, they're not going to check your work. And then he went up there and he did it. And we finished cleaning the grill area for the inspection and got him completely out of the way. And we passed the inspection. When he came back down, he they were already done. <laughs> Man, th and, this, uh, is a, this is a difficult one because I can absolutely see you doing this uh, so <laughs> did you did you make him go out the back door to take oh. the <laughs> <laughs> um and then of course sounds like a rain man moment he was a sweetheart of a guy um we really liked him but he was a pain in the ass and that's why we did it and as funny as it is what we did um it actually functionally got him out of our way so we could finish cleaning because the guy was a talker when we're trying to get work done. So is this a true story or am I lying? So let you guys vote. Truth or lie? Wait. I'm sorry, my blood sugar thing. Oh. Making noises. I need to find out. Maybe, what. maybe we should have more questions. All right, more questions. Ask away. Yeah, I say. I, I think the, you only answer one question. 
We need more. Hey, people. Oh, well, people is voting already. Uh, Debo says true. Benny says true. Anima, Dagmar's girl are in the in my cabinet, which we say it could be true. Sounds possible. <laughs> Coming from you, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, your thoughts on it? You have any? Oh, more Martin? look at this! That's the same story I've heard you tell. So I say, lie. Oh, okay. That is a good analysis of the whole situation. Uh, Penny put some images. I can't see what they are. Little. Oh, emojis. there are a lot of rocks. <laughs> a lot of rocks. <laughs> uh, any more uh, votes? Uh, and or do you have any more questions, Martin? Well, nobody's asking anything. I think they all, they, everybody made their mind. Oh, oh, and we have another one from Anima. Did your boss find out? And did you get in trouble for that? No. No. Because we were senior team leaders, uh, Jim and I were. Jim and I. Jim and I. Jim and I. Okay. I made my mind. It's true. Okay, so it looks like a majority have said that they believed it. Whoa, whoa, uh, Zax has a question. Zax has a question. Let's go. Come on, Zax. Oh, and then, then I expect I don't know. I can't remember. I wish I could remember that. That that would be a great way to end the story. But he did. He he measured one square foot and then he counted all the rocks in that square foot, then measured the roof and did the math and came down to tell us. And, we're, and we absolutely told him, good job. Good job, Dewey. Good job. Fantastic. That is, <laughs> Took it and put it on our clipboard. Here's the next question. <laughs> what was your <laughs> pin for your bank card? <laughs> um, all right. Zach's your vote. Did Vinkman? Yeah, Vinkman's girl sounds possible, so I'd say that she's saying it's true. Uh, so Zach's, what is your vote? True, 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 uh, a lie. Well, it's inconsequential. The only vote that says it's a lie is, comes from Wolverine 66. Everybody else thinks it's true. I didn't see Zach's vote. No, he hasn't voted. Yeah, but come on, Zach, give us a vote. Truth or lie. And then uh, exactly. I will tell you whether you guys are right or wrong. Sex is being a pretty. Did I make donor. this up? Because I'm really good at making up stories. Just you know, I'm a writer. Sex is right. true. All right. So Martin, yours was true too. You think it's true? Yeah. Absolutely a true story. One hundred percent. You can even uh, uh, hit up Jim Woodward and ask him. He'll tell you. Absolute true oh, story. I, we did that to to Huey, sweetheart of a guy. Uh, he had a horrible thing happen to him at work. He, he got hit with one of those Me Too moments. Oh. And, and it really, really sucked. Oh, Mike shows up. It's too late. Yeah, so, well, you know, I have a show to do. Come on. Well, it's not that late. So we, we just played a little minutes. game. Uh, and the game, oh. we'll play it every Friday. Yeah, it so what's this about called... rocks? So mm. I, uh, I will... Tell a story okay. every Friday, and okay. you guys in, in the chat have to decide, did I make it up, or is it a true story? Okay. And if we get more panelists again, I'll let somebody else tell me a story um, behind the scenes, and then mm. we'll let them tell, you know, they can make it up, or they can tell the truth of something that happened, and you guys get to ask questions, you interview them. And okay. for me, it was... Um, that I sent a fellow employee when I worked at McDonald's up on the roof to get rid of him to count the rocks on the roof because we wanted him out of the grill while we cleaned right. it for the inspection. And he was up there so long that the inspection came and went when he finally came back down and told us what the number was up there because he'd taken a square foot and counted all of the, the rocks in that square foot and then measured the roof and did the math. Oh my God. How many rocks were on the roof? And when he gave us it on a piece of paper, we took yeah. it and acted like he did a good job. Good job. <laughs> good job, Dewey. Good job. 
Okay, well, this and nobody totally ever found out what we did, and he thought there he did go. a good job. This sounds like a total you story, so I'm gonna say this. Is <laughs> you <true>. see? <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. I'm a dick. I'm a yep. notorious dick. This, but one this of these days, I'm gonna perfect. tell you a story. It's gonna be made up. This and has the guys... perfect level of douchebaggery that I expect from you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how many rocks? I will. I still have stories I haven't told you, sweetheart. Oh, good. oh my God! <laughs> I do. one even imagine what that could be. <laughs> People in the chat, are you not amused? <laughs> are you not entertained? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we got forty folks watching the show right now. I hope everybody enjoyed the show this week. Um, uh, Keith lost connection, so he had to leave. Uh, yeah. We talked about a few things today. We talked about. Um, Oh, we didn't get to talk about this. Hold on. God, oh, good. Yes, we we jump over Godzilla. Oh, Kong. no, there's a couple of things I, I wanted to talk about that I forgot all about happening. And uh, Glenn Powell is one of them. That Glenn Powell from Top Gun and that movie with girl Gwen, what's her name? With the big boobs. Yeah, um, and if, Anyone But You. It, anyone But You, which I watched it. It's really not a bad film. It was fun. I liked it. It's not great, but it was fun. Uh, Glenn Powell was very moment. good in it. He, uh, yes, I, I chuckled in the film. I absolutely did. Uh, Glenn Powell is set to star in uh, uh, Edgar Wright's Stephen King movie, The Running Man remake. Oh, for Paramount. So yeah, it was like uh, this. This was hitting, and some people, friends of ours, I think Wolverine was one that, that shared this. Um, but uh, there you go. Uh, best known, uh, you know, this guy was in Top Gun. And he's one of those guys that's been around for a bit, but his career never took off. But boy, he did Top Gun, and look what's going on with his career now. Huh. And I'm talking about Top Gun Maverick, by the way. Right. Yes. Yeah. So well, uh, I'm kind of intrigued by this, because as big an Arnold fan as I am, I'm not that big a fan of that movie. I thought it was silly. Yo, that, that movie, oh man. And I, I read I the own, original short story. Yes. I own the book. I own I the read book. it as a kid hmm. when it, it I didn't even know it was Stephen King because it was published under the name of uh, Richard, Richard Bachman. Bachman. Yeah. And, and it was actually in a scholastic book in school. We read it in school. The running really. Book. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And this uh my this two guy. favorite short stories as a kid was that one. And uh, I refute Billsy. Scared the heck out of me. I don't know if you know that story. It's creepy. I love, I love, I love reading short stories. So this is interesting. He's going to do it. What do you think, Martin? Well, he, he's got a good acting chops. However, he still doesn't look the part. It's better than uh, Schwarzenegger because the, the character in the book is really, really, really thin guy. Border yeah, he's, he's just your average guy. There's nothing. Uh, no, no, no. He's, he's thin. He's yeah, really. Thin. I just said. I'm saying he's not big and muscular. Oh, Jesus Christ! You tell me. No, no. Like yes, because yes. you say he's a regular guy. No, he's. Well, he's, he's a, a regular very, guy. Yeah. Most boxing people are kind of head. Average people are very scrawny. What? He's got a very boxing that. Yes, yes. Regular. <laughs> but well, I think it, it's the picture. To be honest, well, that could be. You know, like so my it looks a little head. You know, stretched. I'm just very round. <laughs> but yes, I I would like to to see him in a in a lead in a serious leading role. Hmm. I've been waiting for this. I'll give him a chance. Yeah. Yeah, he was pretty good in Top Gun Maverick. Uh, by the way, uh, Sentai Ranger, uh, my buddy Patrick Parentu was an animator on one of the uh, Dino Rain. Uh, was it? No, I'm thinking of Transformers. I'm sorry. He animated mm -hmm. that. I don't think he worked on the Rangers one. <laughs> Look what... Zach says oh, Pedro Pascal. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> How about Lizzo? No. Lizzo as the oh, running no. man. No, don't say it. They 
if someone oh. someone in Hollywood hears you, That's, they yeah. will do it. Do it. Do it. You may have retired from music, but now she's going to become an action star. Exactly. <laughs> It'll turn into a disaster movie because of all the earthquakes happening. Uh, <laughs> looks like his head is as wide as his neck. Yeah. It's a big square head. He's got a giant head. Yeah. It, oh my God. A size ah. eight hat. <laughs> Finish it. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined that girl. <laughs> That's my girlfriend. That's my girlfriend. Oh, man. Now you know why I'm with her. Um, I love Steve Harvey. He's what Richard Dawson used to be, uh, the host of Family Feud among my favorite game shows. Uh, yeah. I, you know, look, I enjoyed the film. Don't ever think that my saying I, I'm not that big a fan of it doesn't mean I didn't enjoy. I enjoyed the film for what it was. But as a fan of the original short story, I just thought it was a little silly for me. And hmm. uh, I'd like to see a serious take on it. There's my fellow Transformer fan. What's up, Comic Relief Crusader? Yo, dude. Uh, why don't you two get a room? Jesus. Uh, Fine. Jello's much? Mm. Make noises. <laughs> anyway. Um, rest in peace, <laughs> Richard Dawson. Mm. Uh, there was nothing to. He also played one of my favorite characters, uh, Corporal. I think it was Corporal Dunkirk on Hogan's Heroes. Oh yeah, God, I miss that show. Yeah, it's like now I want to watch Running Man. Damn it, God damn it! Talking about the movie makes me want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> let me see. What was the other one I wanted to talk about? Um, let's see. Uh, one more I wanted to talk about. I don't want to talk about Brave New World. Who cares? I know. I just went through that on my show. <sighs> oh, Godzilla. Kong, I... That was it. Godzilla X Kong. Um, let's see. Look, they're As singing the... karaoke. Who's what? Godzilla and Kong. They're singing karaoke. Oh. oh. Godzilla Kong, the new empire, stayed in first place, taking in $30 million in its second weekend. So let's go to box office mojo. Whoops. There we go. Let's see what's going on there. Uh, here's we, where we are right now. They have taken in globally $367,556. That's Hello, Tony. Not bad. Their opening week, it was $80 million. So right now, I don't think they're close to having made their money back. Because uh, oh, let's go look at the budget. Oh, really? so it's under two, $200 million. That's good. That's not bad. That's good. Wow. So, because uh, usually three hundred million. Like so at three hundred million uh, is the guesstimate for the marketing and all that shit. So if they are making over three hundred million, yeah, they've already started to move towards um, leveling out. Yeah. So yeah. let's go back to box office mojo. So in there, three hundred and thirty was it, or three hundred fifty? Something like that, yeah. Three hundred sixty-seven million. So mm. right now, you could say their their profit is at sixty-seven million right now. And if it's still ruling the box office, they need to milk that as long as they can. Yeah. And then I, I haven't guarantee seen it yet. It's all pure profit once they go to video on demand and and uh, selling Blu-ray discs and shit. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I'm thinking about seeing it. You know, just because, you know, movies nowadays. Okay, let, let me tell but, you something. Uh, <laughs> I, I like the movie. I, I enjoy the movie, but this is generations. You see, wow. the whole movie is about Kong, but he right. needs the help of Godzilla at the end to win the fight. <laughs> that is all that it is. Yeah, so it's like Star Trek generations. I yes. Like, yeah. Now I get it. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Okay. 
As long as he doesn't die on a bridge saying, oh my. <laughs> I mean, because I enjoyed, you know, when I saw minus one, I mean, that was phenomenal. I just loved it. It was great. You know, and then on top of that, doing a black and white uh, re-release on top of that with uh, minus one. Um, yeah. You know, Iconic I mean, that was three. better. Hello. Um, so, you know, yes. because I'm more, I'm more appreciative of the Japanese Godzilla rather than, you know, the North American Absolutely. You know, version. Absolutely. You know, 100% more serious films. Although yeah. I am not a fan of uh, that previous Godzilla movie where he comes out of the ocean and flops around on the ground and shit and yeah. mutates. You know? I just was like, not interested in that. Uh, and, they did a better job with Ultraman than they did with Godzilla. Oh, big time. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, t to be honest, the last Godzilla Kong movie, I didn't mind too, too much. It, it was like, fell hey. flat. Here's why it fell flat with people. It's hmm. the human story. Yep, the human exactly. story made no sense in the last film. The reason why is yep. a bunch of the scenes set up things that they didn't finish. Yep. And it all ended up on the cutting room floor because yeah. it was just, it made no sense. A lot of the human story, it's no. including the guy that's running, uh, you know, uh, the body of uh, Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. They, that story just kind of fell off. Yeah. It, you, um, you always, you, you get, I was wondering if he was related to the original Serizawa. I know. It's like the, mm. there's no good payoffs with the human story. And the no. human story seemed to interfere with the overall story of the kaiju. So exactly. they failed in that way. But the kaiju scenes were pretty good. Um, I thought the battle with Mechagodzilla should have been done better. But I was right up front saying the villain's going to be Mechagodzilla. I know yep. it is. Yep. And uh, the minute we knew that there was going to be this uh, connection with the um, skull, I'm like, that's how they're going to control it. It's Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, they left out the alien influence and made it that instead, which I thought was neat. Uh, I, I'm that, looking forward to seeing it come. Yeah, that part I, I didn't mind. mind. Uh, no, and it's and it's exactly the same thing with like you know like all the previous Transformers movies. There's too much focus on yes the, the human story i don't want that's the human story i want to see big giant battling robots fighting it out i want to see their personality yeah the human was, story the, is your c story in a in a yeah, kaiju film. exactly Not your a and, story your a story is the transition of your main kaiju yep. the second story b story is the, the villain yep and then your uh c story is what's going on with the humans Exactly. And it should always be relegated to, to the C spot. It's and that's a why I... that he made with what's his name? Matthew, was it Matthew Vaughn? I can't remember his name. The guy that directed uh, the first one in 14. Oh yeah. He made that mistake and, and he also hid Godzilla like like the shark. I said, Well, that's great. Jaws is great, but it it became that because the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. Yeah. It yeah. didn't work. So they were and this, forced. And this is, sorry. Uh, no, and this is what's kind of holding me back from seeing this one, right? I don't want to see a whole bunch of, you know, human association, yeah, exposition, you, blah, blah, blah. You know, I just want to see Kong, Godzilla fighting whatever bad guy it's going to be. I don't know. Apparently now it's like some sort of ice monster Godzilla and another big bad ape. So, you know. I don't want a bunch of humans yap, 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 yap. I get enough of that when I go home for my wife. Yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> that's the problem with real life is we don't have enough kaijus. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, it's true. Well, if Johnny keeps fucking around, we're going to find out. Mm. I'm just saying. Amen to that. I love <laughs> so, um, well, that's pretty much it. I think we covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, mm. Sorry that we lost Keith. He was out on the road, lost connection. 
It's almost like uh, he doesn't remember that we have a show every Friday. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) And then, yeah, he's got stuff going on with his life. So, uh, and I saw a Joe Petrucci trailer. Um, and what one? uh, Joker Chu trailer. Yeah. 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 No, I'm they not into it. I didn't one. like what they did. No. But that doesn't mean it's not going to be a good film. Uh, I will go see it in the theater. Yeah. I'm hoping that it will be. Do we need a second one? No. You know, am I hoping that this one will be almost as good as the first? Yeah, kind of. I don't think so, to be honest. But I, but I don't want a damn musical. Let's put it that way. Lady Gaga, I'm sorry. So um, I like the fact that somebody posted, I shared it already, but I made a joke uh, way before anybody else uh, about OJ passing away yesterday. (laughs) And the first thing I said was, um, I bet you Norm MacDonald's up in heaven right now, getting all over him (laughs) and pointing out that there's nothing that OJ or uh, Donald Olmeyer from the former head of, because he's dead too, because uh, both <laughs> of them are burning that. in hell and 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 can't do anything about a, Norm Macdonald up in heaven <laughs> making jokes of, at both their expenses. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I saw that tweet too. Oh. Uh, I'm not interested in that Monkey Man movie. It, uh, look, there's something about that actor that bugs me is he keeps being put into revisionist uh, modern eye films and he seems to really gravitate towards them and i suspect that he's one of those woke actors and so Hmm. i'm not interested in him until proven otherwise uh i'm not interested in monkey man because i heard what you know the what the um identity politics are of the film and i'm that turned me off Hmm. just can't tell a story you just can't tell a story without putting the id politics in it that bugs me uh, so, because so, I did not like the film that he did about the Green Knight, I mm. watched it. I was really dis. I felt the sh- the Sean Connery version with uh, uh, Miles um, O'Keefe in it. Oh, okay. Uh, the Green Knight that came out in I think around 1990, 1985 to 1990. I think is when it came out, right in that area. Mm. And it's a, it's not a very good film, but it's 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 got a story to it. Right. I enjoyed it for what it was worth. Miles and Keith cannot act. And mm-hmm. it always leads to that same joke from MST3K. How much uh, Keith do they have in that movie? Oh, they got Miles and Keith. <laughs> Damn. Uh, well, I saw the trailer for it and I'm like, wow, this looks pretty badass. But I mean, it looks it's like a good life. action film, doesn't it? But yeah, then I heard that it it's got a lot of identity politics in it. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to watch it. Not- I will watch it because it doesn't cost me anything to watch it. That's did you see true. the review from Salty Airport podcast? No, I did not. No, oh, no, the review. I, I saw it. Who are they? Uh, I'm just kidding. They're really smart. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Great support there, Jerry. Yeah, Matt Vader is like one of my good buddies. I just, I don't know why I do that. <laughs> I did it about Midnight's Edge one day. Somebody brought up Midnight's Edge. I said, and who are they? <laughs> oh, I think the, uh, this is the movie. The name of the movie yeah, that you were talking about. Sort of the the Valiant. That's the one, Wolverine. That okay. is the uh, Green Knight story. All right. And I thought it was a better film than the new one. Oh hmm. yeah, the new one had bigger budget, better actors in it. But I think th- that version with Sean Connery was better. Huh. It was much well, better. Connery. It was, of course, nice. Gave you a good smack. What? Was he using a headpiece? It came out in '84. I thought it was after '85. You're okay. Thanks a lot, oh, man. Oh wow, huh? Jeez, now I feel extra old. And it was two years after Anima's birth. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Mm. It's like I. I think the worst thing I can say is like. I was already having bad sex when she was born. Good. <laughs> Zing, pow. <laughs> I remember to one the moon, girl Alice. I go out with uh, um, <laughs> one girl that oh, I actually did go out with her. Um, she was sitting there talking to me, and she goes, 
she said, oh, I was in um, middle school when you were in the army. I said, I'd already had two divorces by the time you were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Wait, I'm experienced, what? baby. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, there's something. <laughs> I think there's something very, very uh, ID, uh, identity politics driven by him as an mm. actor. And there are other people that call themselves actors. Uh, what is that guy that was in uh, something Uber? The Uber movie, action Uber film. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, Stan Uber? Was uh, it Stan Uber? Wasn't with probably this guy who plays in Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. Whatever that oh, okay. fucking dude's name. I don't like him either. He's all about identity politics and so I, I don't dig him and his yeah. his whole anti-second amendment yes. thing just stuber. irritates the shit out of me yeah, stuber yeah. yeah stuber i watched the movie stuber. i i actually laughed at some of the scenes in it but i wasn't going to pay for it i refused to give money to that uh kamali ali nanjiani is an right. asshole mm. he's one of the people that was behind removing apu from simpsons I'm like, you oh, have one yeah. fucking Indian character. You you know, they would have happily, I guarantee you, they would have happily hired an Indian actor to take over the voice role. Oh, but yeah, no. exactly. No, we just got to take cancel away, culture. Take away. I hate people who are part of cancel culture, man. And yeah. Kamal, uh, Kamali is. The, the worst Kamal thing is Ali. Apu is or was one of the most stand-up characters in that show. He was. Yeah. Uh, he was a, a family man care of his kids uh yep. he's a big family uh just just a really good character to be honest with you yep. and the way he got treated by uh ali and that other dude that's a journalist you know <laughs> those guys are assholes well i mean the thing was he represented the american dream right he was a business yes. owner large family had his own place great he point had, he, the he had everything dream. exactly he made it in America that, you know, he immigrated from India and he made it, right? But no, we can't have that now. And because, I agree that it would have been nice you know? if, uh, you know, if later they had gotten an Indian actor to do that voice. Uh, but look, man, instead yeah. they canceled him. And, uh, and that's when I lost interest in ever watching The Simpsons again because they bent the knee to it. And yes, yeah. I agree, Shinotsky, it's diversity. Yep, exactly. Even though technically it's DEI. No. No. Not, not it is start it is started like D I E, but then the people made fun of them and then they rearranged the the order of the words. I saw it happen. <laughs> it's <laughs> diversity ethnic inclusion. No, it's is. Uh, diversity, inclusion and equity. That is why it was called in yeah. the beginning. Well, equity. Man, yeah. you, I hear equity and I immediately mm. switch off and I stop paying attention to somebody. Exactly. Thank you. So I guess. What, Martin? I'm sorry. Oh, I thought, I thought you... <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Anima says, thank you for dating oh, me, <laughs> jerk. <laughs> <laughs> She's not thanking me for going out with her. She's thanking me for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your age. Oh yeah. She never do that. Yeah. And I totally do because this, I'm so brutally honest that I just don't even think about not doing something. <laughs> That's the problem with me. Seriously. Um, I turn my filter off for honesty. Uh, and it's it, it can be problematic for me sometimes. I'm a nah. mighty more I'm mighty and morphin like a power ranger. Thank you, Connie. So I do want to thank everybody because we're gonna wrap up now. That was fun. And thanks for playing the game, uh, would, I, would I Lie to You? Uh, I hope you're here on time next week, Crusader, so we can do it and have you I'm, I'm actually be part of that. Um, once again, I'm going to play this. Hey, guys, don't forget to click that like, subscribe, and notification button. We appreciate you watching the show. Now, back to it. Yeah, back to it. <laughs> so, end of the show. 
Uh, I need to look in what, how things are going over on Star Trek right now. Looks like there's a new Captain's Log being made right now. Mm. Mm. Discovery is not going to be good this week. Dude, now I have to wash my screen. Thank you. Um, I hate that. God, why would anybody... Even even for review purposes, why would you even bother? You know it's going to be trash anyway. Yeah, I don't bother with it. Uh, I want to thank, no. uh, of course, Anima Confusa, love of my life, for being here. Shinatsky, my good friend. Uh, Mrs. A, Wolverine626, Kingsport Cal, Sentai Ranger Danny, or Donnie, 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 Don, Don, uh, Ranger Power. Das Wölfen dropped in. It was good to see John in the chat. Zach's my good buddy, Kyle. Kyle. Ariel Bu the Bullet Ballet is here from the UK. She had a little mm -hmm. uh, scare during the show that bomb alarms went, went off in the city. Wow. Uh, FKHC 2005. Tim was here. I didn't know that. Did you uh, give him his video? No. Play it real quick. Well, I will. I will. Oh, it's not here. find it man we have like 2,000 videos here here we go by what name are you known there are some who call me Tommy there you go Tim there's your video my friend uh, also for those of you who did backdoor uh, uh, comments today I'll give you one let's get to the main folder and let's find a couple here. We'll start with. Ouch. Uh, oh, wait. First of all, this one needs to be played just for shits and giggles. Sounds awesome. Yeah, there we go. And we will play. Oh, this. Open your back door, baby. Loosen your hinges. I'll show you my key. Go! Use the back door. I'll stall the crowd. Go, go. go. Close up that back door. Uh, let's see. Ooh, yeah. war zone. Let's go through the back door. There you go. And then lastly, but not least. I don't like the idea of it going out the back door. There you go. Oppenheimer. Yeah. That is an Oscar winning back, back door right there, my friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that back door doesn't get more classy than that. Hell no. Hell <laughs> to the no. So I hope everybody uh, had a good time. It was great hanging out with everybody. You guys are all our friends, and we appreciate you. Uh, everybody at home watching the show right now on Twitter, uh, as well as Rumble, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, please always feel free to comment in the chat. But if you would, guys, don't forget to make a comment uh, down below the video. Uh, that helps with the algorithm. I will make sure. I always make sure to read what you say. Uh, if it's, you know, if it's something to respond to, I'll respond to it. Uh, but most of all, if, if you make a great comment down below, I will pin that little fucker. I'll pin it right to the wall. So, um, and you know, would I lie to you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, once again, uh, I also want to thank diabetes. You. Diabetes. Uh, yeah, I want to thank that for. <laughs> Making my life so awesome now that I'm mm. nearing 60. I'm going to be 60 next month, dude. Wow. Damn, Weird. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. So, uh, I know. I know. I know. I so, know. that's Amazing. it, guys. We are out of here. Have a great Friday. Don't forget. Um, we Teague has a show after us. But don't forget that Friday night, uh, Tights is on with Garrett Nerdrotic. And the gang, and don't forget that Friday Night Frolics with Doomcock, because I'll be watching that tonight. So, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, I will, if I get some rest, I will be joining Loki tonight on his late show. So, nice. So, uh, hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. Uh, other than that, just have a great day, and uh, stay safe, and have a great weekend. <laughs>
And don't forget, tomorrow we're going to be covering uh, uh, Christopher Lambert. Tarzan sounds great. Don't forget, comic news later, please suggest to 